If Jesus came back today, would you be ready? Would you be able to say that your heart was firmly set on Christ? Dear listener, time is ticking. Time is always ticking. Each day that you wake up is a day closer to meeting the Lord. It's a day closer to the second coming of Christ. So how do you spend your time? Most of us lead relatively normal lives. We go to work, we spend time with our families, we pursue our goals and personal interests. But apart from all the time we put into these things, how much attention do we actually give to God? How much time are you spending on making sure you're ready to meet the Lord? How much effort do we put to building a close relationship with Jesus Christ? I guess the question I'm trying to get to is, are you really living for Jesus Christ or are you content living life and simply putting Jesus Christ alongside everything and everyone else? Are you really living life knowing there is eternity to come? In our world today, not only is there evil and trouble lurking at every corner, but there are all sorts of things vying for our attention, and it becomes so easy to be distracted from the things that really matter. However, my firm belief is that in the midst of all of the chaos and confusion of this world, the voice of God is still calling out to us. The Spirit of the Lord is knocking on our hearts. However, it's up to us to listen. Hebrews 3 verse 15 says, As it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Oh, we love comfort. Whether you're a Christian or not, whether you're a pastor or an atheist, whether you're a rock star or a janitor, we all love to be comfortable. It's natural. It's human. But the danger in being comfortable, or rather too comfortable, is that we get complacent so easily. Yes, so easily. In this world, in your everyday life, including in your career, being comfortable can very quickly lead you to be in the same box as being lazy. Because if there's no fire in your belly to work hard for something, if you're not focused and working towards something, then this leads to less success, less money, less skill, less recognition. But in your Christian walk, being comfortable leads to being lukewarm. We have to consciously choose to live with a fire in our hearts for the Lord and know that everything we do is about Jesus. Everything we do is for Jesus. We have to. We must make sure that everything we do is unto Jesus. Everything we do is to better our relationship with the Lord. It's to give Him glory and praise. Now, it won't always be comfortable to do this. There will be times where it means you have to sacrifice. There will be times when you will have to humble yourself. There will be times that you will have to serve. If you're in a comfortable place, you'll be unable to do any of this. But if you have that fire in your belly, that fire in your heart for God, then your attitude will be one that says, Lord, wherever you lead me, I will follow. So remember, it's a dangerous thing to be too comfortable as a child of God. It's not to say you can't be comfortable, but rather don't let your comfort mean that working for God, serving God, becomes an inconvenience. It should be a privilege to serve in the kingdom of God. Being too comfortable means that you see it as an inconvenience. And the final point of danger that I'd like to mention is being too busy for God. It's a dangerous thing to become so busy that you cannot accommodate the Lord in your schedule. P. 
People these days seem to think that being ridiculously busy is somehow the way to be. It makes some people feel important. But there is no merit to just being busy for the sake of being busy. There is also nothing to gain spiritually if you're working all the time with no regard for your spiritual life. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? This mindset is a distraction to the Christian's walk with God. There is real danger in becoming too busy for God. Work, family, friends, hobbies, relationships, whatever life may bring, There are a world of distractions waiting for you in every corner of your mind. There are even people who can't see that they're distracted because their busy work is actually religious work. It's sad but prevalent in Christians to get caught up doing things for God while not spending any time with God. The personal relationship is actually being neglected while outwardly It looks like you're thriving because of religious acts and work. I know of many Christians that do God's work but are actually starving for spiritual food in their personal lives. God wants us to serve for his purpose, of course. But don't let anything, not even religious work, be a distraction to your actual relationship with God. He wants your real heart, your whole heart. And he wants it sincerely. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Lord Jesus, I pray that I would not be accustomed to or conformed to this world. Philippians 3 verses 20 through 21 say, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed and reassuring word that my citizenship is in heaven with you. I belong with you, Lord, and heaven is my home. This is why I understand that friendship with the world is enmity with God. And so I do not wish to be a friend of the world and make myself an enemy of the one true God. But I would rather be rejected by the world and accepted by you, Lord Jesus. Father, in the moments when I feel like holding on to things that you're calling me to let go of, may the Holy Spirit press upon my heart and remind me of your sacrifice on the cross. Fill my heart with an enthusiasm for your kingdom. As your word tells me, Father, help me to seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. Lord, let this be my heart's desire. Lord, I pray for a heart of worship like David. I too want to chase after your heart. I too want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Dear God, give me the boldness of the three Hebrew boys, the boldness to remove every idol in my life, the boldness to refuse to bow down to anything that tries to take your place in my life. I pray that I would be willing to give up everything for you because you gave it all for me. May I be obedient to your word and take up my cross each day and follow you. Father, I know that you call me not to a life of comfort, but to one of sacrifice. I know that this life will not be easy. The narrow road will not be easy, but by your grace, I pray that I will find the strength to march forward. I know that to follow you, Lord, is to give up every other allegiance. But I also know that you're of far more value than anything I could lose. Help me to let go of every idol that I've been clinging to. Lord, give me a willing and obedient heart. Like Abraham, let me gladly lay down my most prized possessions and build you an altar of worship. All I have, all that I am, 
God, it all belongs to you. So let my body be a living sacrifice to you, holy and pleasing, set apart for service in your kingdom. Help me to build my life upon you, even if it means giving up things that I love and treasure. Give me the courage to trade good things for the best things. Whatever you call me to do, wherever you call me to go, may I do it gladly and without hesitation. Help me not to mourn the things I lose, but rejoice in what I have gained. Your word says, whoever loves his life will lose it, but whoever lays it down will find it in the end. Lord, I lay my life before you now, trusting that whatever I give up will be multiplied in eternity. Give me faith to stay the course, Lord, even when I can't see the outcome. Abraham didn't know that you would spare Isaac, but he trusted that your plan was far greater than his. May my life always reflect that willingness to sacrifice everything to obey your perfect will. Jesus, I come before you with open hands, withholding nothing from the one who owns all things. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are my keeper. You are my shepherd, and you are the Prince of Peace. God, be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Thank you.